Hey, it's Nero here, and in this video, I want to talk about the six most fundamental mistakes that first time investors make that often derail their investing goals and cost them a lot of money, pain, and heartache. All right, so I've got these mistakes here on, on these blue cards. I'm going to go through them individually. Mistake number one not having a clear goal. See, I see so many people reach out to me saying, you know, I want to buy an investment property. And I often ask them, great, what's the plan? Why do you want to invest? And often people will say, I don't know, it seems like a good idea. Or my accountant told me to, to invest. Or uh, my friends are investing, so I think I should maybe, maybe invest. Right? And the problem is that if you don't have a clear goal, how can you know what's the right property for you? See, I see so many people who are investing because they don't have a clear goal, they end up looking at what their friends are doing and then buying that kind of property. Often they're buying after everyone else has bought, so they're missing, on cap missing out on capital growth, or they're just buying the wrong type of property for them. So you wanna make sure you have a clear goal. So when someone tells me, Nero, I'm looking to invest in the next 15 years, this is my current asset base, this is how much money I, I have, this is where I wanna be in 15 years time, how do we make it happen? When you have that level of clarity, it makes it so much easier to start looking at what kind of properties you should be looking to buy. So get clear on your goals first and foremost. Then number two is this. It's trying to get rich too soon. And I've seen too many people fall victim to, I guess a lot of the stuff that you see online sadly about how you can buy property for no money down, make $100,000 in passive income in 12 months time, starting with, with zero if you do this special trick. Okay, and I'm sure maybe some of them may work for some people, but you've got to ask yourself how realistic is it for, for you to try and make that kind of money so quickly. All right, and so you need to just be willing to be, be patient. Property investing is often a game of patience more than anything else. It's about waiting for the right opportunity. It's about looking for, for, for the right market. Right? But if you're in a hurry, you often end up, or you may end up rather, being like the kind of people who felt they missed out on, on the property boom and then went and bought two octoplane units in 2017, 2018 in Sydney or Melbourne and have done their dough, done their money. All right? And then they're now in a lot of strife. Okay, so you want to be patient. Yes, you want to start fast, absolutely. You don't want to procrastinate, no. But at the same time, you don't want to be in a hurry and just, just brush in and buy something. You want to make sure you take your time, you be comfortable. You don't need to get rich overnight. Property investing is not a get rich quick game. And anyone who tells you that is either blindly naive or trying to flog you something. Then number three is investing emotionally instead of investing on the numbers. I can't tell you the number of people who chose not to invest during the, the Sydney boom because they said, Nero, I don't like that particular area. I don't like the particular suburb or I don't like that, that kind of house. But here's the thing you gotta understand. The value of a property is not determined by whether you like the area or not. It's determined by where there's greater supply than demand. It's determined by, by the fundamentals of the, the area. Okay, so rather than investing emotion and looking for the trophy property, either property with the, the waterfront views or whatever the case is, look at the numbers. Do the numbers stack up? Take the emotion out of it. Personally, I've got investment properties that I have never seen before, and I'm okay with that, right? Because these days with Google Images, Google Research, everything you can do online, you can do your research ultimately I don't really care what the property looks like. I just want to know, is it rising in value? Have I bought in a good area? And am I getting the rent every month? Okay, so invest on the numbers. Do not invest emotionally. Your emotions can hurt you when it comes to investing. In many ways, investing on the basis of emotion can be financial suicide. Don't do it. Invest on the numbers. Then number four, and it's a big one. It's relying on other people's opinions rather than professional advice. Okay, people often say, you know, I'm, I want to invest in this area because my uncle told me to invest here or my, my older brother told me to invest here or, or mum and dad or whatever the case happens, happens to be. Look, I'm not someone who's going to say, don't listen to the people who are in your inner circle, right? I'm sure that most people, I certainly hope that's the case, is that 
they have your best interest at, at heart. However, just because someone has your best interest at heart doesn't mean that they're qualified to give you the kind of advice that you're looking for. All right. If you know my story, you know that I started investing back 17 years ago. It was uh, 2002 and I did all my research. Despite the fact of living in Sydney, I went and bought a property all the way over in Western Australia. Now, at the time, most people I knew thought I was crazy. Uh, they, they thought I'd lost my marbles. One friend even called me and said, Nero, you're an idiot. You're going to lose your money. You know, it's, it's, you've, you've done the wrong thing. Well, those very same people, though, were stunned to see that 18 months later, I doubled my money on my first investment property. Okay, to be honest, I was too. I couldn't believe that my research had worked out that well. And no, not all my investments have been that successful. I've since fine-tuned the system. But the fact of the matter remains, if I had listened to the opinions of everyone around me, rather than relying on data and professional advice and guidance, I would never have bought that first property. And I probably wouldn't have the career that I have right now, helping so many people get ahead financially through the safe and strategic use of investment property. So make sure you're getting the right advice from someone qualified, someone who's got the experience in order to be able to guide you accordingly. Then number five, people going cheap instead of chasing value. What I mean by that is this, I'm seeing at the moment a lot of people saying, you know, I'm living in Sydney, I can't afford Sydney, I'm gonna buy somewhere cheap. And they're looking to either often go and buy in a, in a regional town. But here's the thing, you, when you're looking to invest, you need to focus on value. Now, here's how I define value. For me, value is buying something today that I believe we will be worth more in the future. That's value to, to me, okay? So if I'm buying something at say $400,000, I'm banking on the fact that based on my research, it's gonna be worth $500,000 or, or more over the coming, coming few years. That's value to, to me. What isn't value to me is buying something for say $320,000, great, maybe even negotiating it down from the listing price of 350, so you maybe you negotiate 30 grand off and feeling great about yourself, only to know that five years later, when you go back to revalue the property, it's still only worth 320 or 350, whatever the price was. You haven't actually had any capital growth. That's not value to me, that's cheap. And so I see people looking at, at, at regional towns going, look, I'm gonna buy there, it's cheaper. And people say the rents are gonna cover the mortgage and all that. I'm like, that's great, but that's not value, that's cheap. You need to chase after quality. You need to understand that if you're going to build a property portfolio, if you're gonna succeed at property investing, you need to be buying properties that have a good chance, if they're not already in a growing market, that you're buying in markets where you believe they will rise in value over the coming years. Focus on value. Don't chase cheap. And then the last one, and it's this, it's only investing in a market that you think you know, okay? People, for example, in Sydney during the years when prices were falling dramatically from 20, uh, mid 2017 to mid, mid 2019, people said, oh, uh, the market's crashing, uh, it's, it's time to run for the hills. And I was like, no, no. It's just the Sydney market and Melbourne market are having a fairly uh, rapid correction after many years of rising in, in, in value. And that correction was welcomed by, by the market, especially first home buyers. But other markets didn't fall in value. In fact, many areas actually rose in value over the same period of time. Okay, so you've got to understand that when people, when you say, I want to invest in a market I know, my question is, how do you know you know the market? You might uh, know friends who live in that particular suburb. You might know there's some good schools in there, which is, which is fantastic. But do you know the market from an investment perspective? Do you understand the population growth? Do you understand the ratio of supply to demand? Is demand higher than supply? Do you understand the, the vacancy rate? Do you understand how much infrastructure is going into the area? What about the affordability index? Are prices affordable for the average person? Plus so much more. These are the things that you want to be looking at. If you can answer those questions, then you know a suburb. But if you don't, it just means that you're maybe familiar with it, which means you are really investing emotionally, which one of the things I said earlier on, and that's what can end up costing you. For example, like people who saw huge growth in their, in their suburbs in Sydney, people bought in, say, the northwest of, of Sydney, and then they went, went and bought an investment property in the very same suburb they lived in, but just maybe two streets away, right? Because they could go drive by and look at it. They were investing emotionally and now that suburb has dropped, both their home has dropped in value, but so is their investment property. 
and now they're, they're certainly not on track to achieve their financial goals. So make sure when it comes to, to in investing, you are ultimately doing the, the numbers, you have a clear goal, you're getting the right advice, you are investing on, on numbers, and if you do that, you will avoid some of these basic fundamental mistakes that so many people make, people who wanna get ahead, and really you can start moving ahead faster and start achieving your property investing, your financial goals faster than you probably ever thought you could. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you found this video valuable and you're thinking you might like my help to help you find an investment property, then head on over to nerocall.com. That's Nero, N-I-R-O, nerocall.com to discover our unique five-step process that's helped my private client group purchase now well over $66.2 million worth of property. And then if you like what you see, you can book in for a free half-hour phone consult with me personally. Either way, Thanks again for watching.